Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. Yesterday was an exciting day. Starship 11 launched and tried to land. Unlike the other flights, we could not see much of what was going on. Something went wrong, and the flight had to be terminated. Why is the landing proving so hard for SpaceX? Let's look at what went wrong. If we analyze the launches of flights 8, 9, 10, and 11, we start to see some similarities. Every starship launched flawlessly. What does this tell us? Rocket engines are usually single use. They start in a vertical position and fire on the launch pad. They accelerate quickly and start the pitch over maneuver as fast as possible. Whether we are looking at the Apollo Saturn V, the SLS, the Energia, etc., they all have one thing in common. These engines start vertical. When they are parked on the launch pad, gravitational forces are in this direction. When they are in flight and starting to pitch over, there is a component of gravitational drag that pulls in the downward direction. But with an acceleration of 1.7 g's, the major force is still relatively in line with the engine. That means that all the plumbing has to worry about is pumping fuel and oxidizer in one direction. Now for Starship operations, the engines are turned off and the ship falls. After a flipover maneuver during testing or on re-entry. During this fall, the broadside of the ship is turned toward the airflow. The g-forces from a fall that starts at 10 kilometers is a lot less than the g-forces that will be felt from orbital re-entry. In testing, the ship starts at a relative vertical velocity of zero. As the ship accelerates, it reaches a terminal velocity, discussed in this video. Free-falling objects that start at a relative velocity of zero will never exceed terminal velocity. Coming back from orbit is different. In the vacuum of space, Velocity can be higher than anything achievable in atmosphere. That means a starship might pull 4 or 5 g's of deceleration during re-entry. This means that there will be tremendous forces in this direction on the Raptors. Other rocket engine companies only have to worry about starting once, firing continuously in a vertical orientation, and shutting down. Let's do a quick post-mortem evaluation of every flight so far. Starship 8 tried to land with two engines firing, but here we see one engine struggling with insufficient fuel flow, causing the fuel to oxidizer ratio to be too low, creating a high oxygen flame, resulting in one of the engines burning away the copper lining of the combustion chamber, giving this lovely green flame. This produces insufficient power, and we land too hard, rupturing our propellant tanks. Starship 8 postmortem, manner of death, unnatural, due to engine failure, cause of death, Insufficient header tank pressure. Solution, add helium system to pressurize the header tank. Now let's look at Starship 9. Starship 9 also flies perfectly until the very end. We see the flip maneuver start, but one engine fails to ignite. A single engine doesn't have enough power to complete the maneuver, much less to land. And Starship dies. Manner of death, unnatural due to engine failure. Cause of death, ignition failure. Solution, Light all three engines at start of landing maneuver, then shut them down sequentially. Now Starship 10. Starship 10 ignites all three engines, shutting them off one at a time. There were issues with the landing legs, and it also comes down a little hard with a little bounce. That was enough to cause a fracture of the propellant tanks that caused a rupture after several minutes. But Starship 10 did land successfully. Elon Musk said that there was too much helium mixed with the fuel flow, and this caused low thrust in the engines. Manner of death, unnatural due to engine failure. Cause of death, too much helium mixed in the fuel. Solution, they didn't say, but I assume they addressed that. Finally, Starship 11. A lot of things were not optimal with Starship 11. Waiting a few hours for the fog to clear isn't just considerate for the fans, but allows video recording from multiple angles. This allows much better analysis. Here we see the three engines burning and notice that this engine seems to be burning fuel rich. Methane flame should be blue, but if there is too much fuel to oxygen it will be orange. I don't know if they needed this engine for leverage to complete the landing maneuver, but at some point SpaceX determined that the flight was lost and should be detonated where it was. This is usually to prevent it from going somewhere else and crashing or blowing up. Starship 11. Manner of death, unnatural due to engine failure. Cause of death, unknown at this time. What is causing all these crashes? Engine failures, obviously. But why are the engines failing? Rocket engines are the most complex part of any spaceship. 
SpaceX is restarting engines that fired in a vertical position and are now horizontal. If SpaceX was using the Raptors in a configuration similar to the Space Launch System, they would be working fine. In fact, if you took the SLS configuration and replaced the RS-25 engines, all four of them, with Raptors, you would need 14, and replacing the main hydrogen tank with a smaller tank to hold the much denser liquid methane, and kept everything else the same, this thing would already be flying. If Elon Musk fired a starship on a ballistic trajectory to see how high and far it could go and let it crash into the ocean, it would be very impressive and seem to work perfectly. But it would not be reusable. It would not be able to land. Restarting these engines and perfecting the landing maneuver are critical to SpaceX's dream of colonizing Mars. No one even thinks about asking ULA to try landing the SLS. We would be looking at a century of development and billions of dollars a year. SpaceX is trying to restart engines that are in a horizontal position. There are advanced valves and powerful plumbing systems in the Starship propulsion system, but getting these to all work perfectly while the rocket is swinging through the air is hard. The cause of every Starship crash so far is engine failure. Except Starship 11, of course. Aliens took that one. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay safe. At Astro Proterra.